Kelly, first of all, I love how you started off the show to say that stand is the antidote to inaction. Um, very clever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and but that also went with the th with the theme of the show too. Uh, yeah, that's how she closed the show. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, but her whole the whole discussion and what she talked about was essentially um, act as a, activism and volunteerism, mm -hmm. um, taking action to do what she sees and that what millions of Americans like her and us see. Uh, need to be done to continue to protect our our republic and the principles and the values that we uh, are passionate about and that make America the uh, greatest and most prosperous nation um, in human history. Now, one of the things that I wanted to sort of ask you about and get your thoughts on, um, I really thought that the work that she said that they're doing in terms of election integrity, um, the way she phrased it as an existential crisis for our country, mm -hmm. I thought was really powerful. Uh, and I'm not even talking about 2020 or any of these other things for those of you know you out there who'd be like, oh, election deniers. No, that's just a way of dismissing legitimate questions and concerns about things that are happening right now in our system of elections. Now, the truth is America, from the get-go, we have struggled and had to fight, every generation has had to fight to uh, remove rot um, in our election system process or to remedy injustices, right? We know uh, blacks were denied the right to vote for a long, a long part of our nation's history. Um, women were denied the right to vote for part of our nation's history, right? Like there have been seasons throughout our nation's history where there have been significant issues with our election system that have had to be remedied. This isn't the first. Um, so we have a history of overcoming these challenges. We need to do it again. And the way that we do it again isn't by calling people who are asking legitimate questions or pointing out legitimate issues, you're just an election denier. We're all in this democracy together. And if we don't get it right, Democrat, Republican, left, right, conservative, liberal, all of our freedoms are in jeopardy. We're no longer going to be governed um, by people that we've elected. I mean, our whole republic is founded on consent of the governed, right? Yeah. And if you if you can't have an election that's easily auditable, easily verifiable, um, where you can't remedy any issues that may have transpired in the process, then strictly speaking, you can't say with strict confidence that you're, it's government by consent. And when the people begin to lose trust in that system, things start to unravel. So we all need to take it very seriously. Now, on the other hand, and then I'll pass it on to you, we also need to be careful about, well, because we lost, that meant something bad right. happened or something unfair happened or whatnot. Like, we need to learn to be gracious losers <laughs> when, we, when we lose, right? Because if we believe in consent, uh, government by consent and democracy, then we're going to lose sometimes. And that's okay. What's not okay is when we see irregularities and things happening that um, cause us to question the outcome. And then when people in power who have the ability to do something about it just dismiss it and just say you're being a sore loser or you're being a conspiracy theorist or whatnot. Um, anyway, I thought that was, I mean, she was just, that was such a powerful point she was making about that as an existential threat. Yeah, of all the things, you know, she... So she's the person who's suing Twitter for canceling conservatives. Um, she's on the front lines of so many issues. When you go on their website, it's fascinating the various things that they are are taking on. She talked about the COVID cases with, with Gavin Newsom in California, which they've actually have COVID cases on different issues from hospitals to places of worship, et cetera, First Amendment issues across many states. Of all the things, I, I didn't know how she'd answer the question, but for her to say, 
as someone on the front lines of civil rights and civil liberties, that's the issue. And I think it's because of what you just touched on. Um, when the people lose trust that a government that's supposed to be led by we the people is no longer led by we the people, then what are we doing here? Who's actually leading this system? And I think to your point, the, the people who have the greatest interest in making sure that it's not led by we the people are the people who are in charge. That's really, you know, as you start to peel back what's happening here, when the voters lose trust in the system and they start to become suspicious, who do they become suspicious of? Right? And when you start to peel this back, who are the people who, quote, always seem to win the election? And that's where you start getting people who go, wait a minute, I don't trust this outcome. I don't trust what's happening here. The people in charge always seem to be the ones who win. The people who controlled the system, right? It's the Secretary of State or the, they're the ones who seem to win. And these are both Republicans and Democrats. These things are documented by um, the people who are tracking voter fraud and voter election complaints and lawsuits that have been won and stuff. Um, so these are on both sides. That's when you see this kind of collective distrust by the voters of what's happening here because the people who have the most gain in making sure the quote system doesn't work are the people who get to preserve the power. And that means that we're no longer that American government that was set up to be of the people, by the people, for the people, we the people, you know, to form a, a more perfect union. We don't want a autocracy, a king, a patriarch, or whatever. We want a government led by us. So if we're not making the decisions anymore, who is? And that's where you see the voter drop off, the voter suppression, et cetera. And I agree with you that this is something as a system that we've struggled with for a long time, but it didn't just end when certain groups were given the right to vote. Even after people were given the right to vote, we've struggled with this, right? This is why we have National Voter Registration Act and these voter, the Equal Rights Act, and all these acts that have tried through time to protect and preserve, get rid of gerrymandering, get rid of voter suppression techniques here and there. And I think for a couple decades, we thought we pretty much mostly worked it out only to stumble into modern age for this issue to raise as kind of a um, issue of first impression for a lot of people in this current generation. But in our, maybe our parents or grandparents generation, this isn't new. We've, people who've lived in the civil rights movement saw this play out, right? It's just being resurrected. And I agree with you, the least helpful thing to do is to point fingers and call names. The most helpful thing to do is to ask questions. And when people get extreme on either sides, we start to lose debates and arguments. We need to ask open-ended questions like, what did you see? Where is the evidence? And we need to be careful with words. So someone was talking to me about voter fraud the other day, and I said, eh, I have a long history of investigating fraud. Fraud is a crime, and it has evidence, and it has intent, and it has to be provable. That's a lot different than irregularities or um, there's there's problems in the system or we have suspicion or there might have been, you know, we didn't have good chain of custody. Like there's all kinds of other words we can put around things that mean that our system needs to be improved, but that's not the same as fraud. So we've got to be careful with our words and our terms as we talk about cleaning up systems. But we do want to make sure all together that our system maximizes trust it minimizes vulnerabilities and opportunities for uh, things to be corrupted or taken advantage of, and that we get a, a voter turnout that represents and reflects the will of the people and that can't be corrupted, abused, um, where fraud can happen, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, as long as they're transparent and auditable, I think that's what, you know, most that people... That helps build yeah, trust. That's what, that builds trust. And so I think this is something that uh, a lot of people, a lot of people in power have used to try to divide us, but it really should be something that unites us because if our votes are going to count on either side, we all need to be sure that the process is being followed well and accurately and complied with. And if it's not, that we have a remedy 
to make sure mm -hmm. that you know things can be fixed. So I just I think uh, I think she's right. That's a major issue uh, for for our country going forward. And I my hope and prayer is that uh, Americans on both sides of the aisle, politicians on both sides of the aisle, will take it seriously and be willing to make those changes and fix those issues because what might be advantageous to one person in you know one situation won't necessarily always be and so us working together to make sure this is all buttoned up and people can trust the system is in everybody's interest oh that's the nature of civil rights right they'll flip mm -hmm. on you real fast you got to protect them for everybody or they're protected for, for nobody. nobody exactly another thing i really liked about what she said is um, being on the front line of innovation that going back to the same old things doesn't help anybody that will always be behind I thought that was a really key thing too and that that isn't left for just leaders that's left for all of us that there's always going to be people who want the same old but we have to be the ones who who push forward and do something about it right so getting in front of your school boards um, being active and volunteering doing something is always better than not doing something and not being afraid of the new so embracing new methods and new ways of doing stuff, that's the key to winning, that's the key to progressing, moving forward into new areas.